Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Welcome to another episode of Dr. Hafiz Explains and in this episode we are still going to cover the low incidence disability but we are going to be talking about one of the low incidence disability which is the uh, visual impairment as promised. Uh, if you missed the previous video please click on the link above there. And as usual, I am Dr. Hafiz and you are watching Dr. Hafiz Explains. Right, um, visual impairment. Why does visual become the most important thing in, in a learning environment? For example, when you are teaching the basic thing A, B, C. The students need to see what A looks like, what B looks like, and to differentiate between the A and B. It's the same with, with other subjects. For example, if you are teaching science, you are demonstrating uh, how to carry out uh, an experiment, and the students need to see what kind of chemicals they be handling, tools, so visuals is part of the, I think, one of the most important element in learning to see what they are going to learn that is important. So 80% of learning in the classroom is through visual. The visual impairment is determined by two things, visual equity and visual field. So visual equity here means that the ability for you to differentiate objects, whether it's near or afar, so you'll be able to see and differentiate between the objects clearly. So if I put this in front of you, if you can't see this, then something's wrong. You need to go to the optometrist and get your eyes done. Okay, so uh, that's visual equity. The other one is the visual field. So visual field is the visible area of sight. Okay, some sort of like uh, when you looking at something you can actually measure where your sight ends so so for me it's about here so yeah so this is my visual field so now let's look at the causes of visual impairment so our visual can be affected if uh, there is something wrong there is an interference to any part of our eyes, internal, I mean internal part of our eyes, for example, on the optic parts or the nerve that are connecting eyeballs to our brain. So if any interference happen on any part of, uh, of our optic uh, nerves or on the lens, then we have visual impairment. What are the source of the, the, the uh, visual impairment? One of it is uh, refractive errors. This has got to do with the optics of our eyes or probably the um, the size of our eyeballs and damaged to our eye cortex. So that can cause uh, visual impairment. Okay, so let's look at refractive errors. It is about abnormalities in the process of light refraction in the eye. So when light goes through our eyes, it's refracted from the lens, okay? Uh, well, not, not this lens. Our eyes has, has its own optic lens. If you can see on the picture there, the topmost picture is when we have normal sight. The line of the light falls correctly on the at the end of our eyeball but if uh, there is something wrong with our our optic lens or the shape of our eyeballs it will affect how light refracted in our eyes so it will be either shorter or it will be refracted behind our eyes yeah so either of this will result on short sightedness or far sightedness okay Moving on, now we are looking into the interference in the structure of the eye. So this kind of disability is likely to happen due to the weak development of the eye, to the optic lens, 
for example damage of the lens or to the muscle yeah and the examples of this disability is cataract and also glaucoma the next stop damaged eye cortex now this this kind of disability is caused by faulty uh, visual cortex in the brain so based on the diagram above the visual cortex should be behind uh, your brain so these cause uh, the inability of the brain to decipher information the visual information um, received by your eyes so it's it's like you your eye can see but the visual cortex cannot make cannot make any sense out of it so and, and this can happen due to uh, lack of oxygen at birth brain injury and infected uh, central nervous system so these are the probably the causes of the damaged eye cortex yep so now we're going into the traits of students with special needs specifically in terms of visual impairment so now if you have these students with these traits you might be dealing with students that has visual impairment uh, the first one lack of focus of course if you if, if, if the students can't see what's on the whiteboard or blackboard in front of them they can actually focus and probably their attention is won't be there weak hand eye coordination your hand coordination must coincide with your eye perception this is about uh, perceiving the visual space but if the students can't really see well for example I'm your student I can uh, when I when I'm not using this I cannot see um, much so I can see there's a camera there but beyond that it's a bit blurred and if it's far away I can't really recognize who you are or what what the object is okay so I need this I need my glasses clumsy one of the traits that for for students with uh, visual impairment because they can't see yeah they can't see so they might bump into things yeah and uh, late developmental of uh, language and speaking ability so this is probably due to them not being able to decipher what they see in terms of uh, the language, the alphabets, the um, other things that make up the language, so the, all the visual cues. As a result of that, the development of the language is impeded. And on top of that, because of all the, the factors mentioned previously, it will affect their academic performance. So that's all that I have on visual impairment. I hope that you understand the points that I've put across. So for the next video, we are going to cover the hearing disability, part of the low incidence disabilities. Until then, my name is Dr. Hafiz and you have watched one of the episodes on Dr. Hafiz Explains. See you there. Bye.